I've often said that going to work is like reading a collection of short stories every day. And I remember coming up to a patient and she kept saying, sure enough, sure enough. His father was uh, screaming for help. I had to tell her that he was gone. You can't believe the gift that it is to be exposed to so many people's lives in such an intimate way. That's a powerful gift. And I think about that at the end of every shift. The emergency room really is the people's room. It's the place where they can come 24-7, 365 days of the year. Whoever you are, whatever your need, we're here to take care of you. What we today know as emergency medicine and emergency care uh, was essentially a room in the basement of the hospital uh, where some suturing was done, maybe an asthmatic was treated. What was it called in the early days? It wasn't an emergency room. It was called the pit. And that's what it was. There were exposed pipes and <laughs> dripping water. And it went into an area that had four little treatment spaces, basically a stretcher. Uh, and then there was a GYN room. It sort of had a loading dock look to it. And they, over that, was, it, was, it said emergency. And someone had tacked on a sign, uh, if it's an emergency, ring the bell. They were very small. They were crowded places. Some actually thought we should decrease the size of the emergency department, increase the waiting time so people wouldn't come there. Their opinion was, the ER is the best place to learn. This is where we've got to put the brand new doctors. They don't need supervision. They don't really need a specialist showing them what to do. As a, a young emergency physician, I was scared because I knew how little I knew and how incompetent I was. My dad was 64 when he died of pulmonary edema. His cardiologist wouldn't come to see him when he went to the emergency department where he was cared for by an intern the same year I was interning. I wouldn't have known how to take care of him. I began to think to myself, there's got to be a better way What's the prototypical, perfect ER doc? I've thought about that a lot. Somebody who enjoys a lot of stress and never knowing what's going to happen the next second. You cannot uh, anticipate what's going to walk through the door, be dragged through the door, roll through the door, etc. And you have to be prepared for everything. They've got to be smart. Um, they have to enjoy adrenaline. Adrenaline junkies. Do you occasionally hit people? Yeah. Do they sometimes hit you? Yes, they do. Uh, do you have to strap people down? Yep. We act in an environment that is fast-paced and information poor. How much time do you think we spend with a patient talking to them in the ER? Two to three minutes, max. If we were kids today, we'd all be diagnosed with ADHD. Be able to leave one intense situation, walk over to the next bed, and not carry that with you. To be able to switch it off in the 10 steps it takes you to get to the next bed, because that person doesn't need the baggage of the other thing that you just experienced. But then they have to have this other thing that is about able to make people feel comfortable really fast. The humanity, the ability to be in a specialty where you get to interact with so many different patients. We love the opportunity to be able to save a life. 
that's the most fulfilling um, thing that we do as doctors and that's something we have the privilege of doing more regularly in emergency medicine. We probably also drink too much and party too hard and do lots of bad things. And somebody who can cry. If you can't cry, if I stop crying with, with relatives of the deceased, I'm gonna quit. Maybe not every day you get a chance to um, save a life. Oh, sorry. It's actually my alarm telling me going on shifts in a half hour. <laughs>